Southern Hemisphere. One of it's the not major going way. Into orbit. Shh. 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 One more. Oh, as, no, let's uh, get them all. as Phil could tell you, there are plenty of ways in which space can kill us and wipe out the Earth. Um, and so some people in a more romantic state of mind think of space, human space flight as a way of ensuring long time survival of the species. Mm. Is that at all a part of these discussions at this time? Is this more just um, you know, an individual um, driver for people? Well, in you space look at the cover of the TAM 9 uh, brochure, what do we call it? Uh, uh, episode program. guide. Yeah, program. It's uh, this whimsical thing about the future, but terraforming Mars is not as easy as it looks. But it, but it is, I think we, I bet we'd all agree though, at some point in the long term future, the future of humanity is in space. It's a part of, we want to diversify, we're all in a one shot thing here on Earth, and so I have no problem no, with ultimately delusional. colonizing well, other it, systems. It's delusional, it, it, I'll tell you why. Shh, shh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this crops up in a different way. There's a mission, there's a telescope no. called the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope. Yeah. 10 meter telescope designed to survey the sky once every three nights from the southern hemisphere. One of it's the major ways. <laughs> One of the major justifications for its funding is it could find that killer asteroid and give us years. And I know this because I narrated the NSF video they're showing. Um, yeah. It'll give us a couple years chance to figure out how to get that sucker somewhere else other than killing us. And so we can justify prolong justify science by saying we're going to prolong human beings by protecting our own planet with the LSST in this case. So the you only can fund science by saving humans. The only preventable natural disaster yeah, is the uh, near-Earth object yeah. getting too but near. But I have to rebut Larry here. <laughs> Lawrence. Lawrence. Yeah, thank you. Lawrence. Uh, Neil, make it short because our keynote speaker is a real diva. So okay. <laughs> I don't want to eat into his time. I don't want to eat into his time because okay. you know what he's like. So. Real short. Here we go. It's, it's real short. <laughs> I'm guessing, Lawrence, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm just guessing that whatever it takes to terraform Mars and move a billion people there so that we're a multi-planet species so that one planet does not go extinct from an asteroid, whatever effort that is, that's probably more than what it takes to deflect an asteroid. Uh, I agree with you there. Absolutely, I agree with you there. But we I do. Agree. I, but I actually. Um, so, so, so the notion: let's live in 22 planets so we're protected. Oh no, that's no. I, I don't mean it protected. I think we'll eventually, we will eventually colonize other systems. I think but you said it to protect the species, and that's. Oh, oh, about. okay. Well, fine, fine. Well, we only need to move two people to Mars then. I, yeah. I read that in a book. Adam and Eve. Really fertile people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, by the way, well, I won't tell you. No, 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 no. So human spaceflight is is uh, very expensive. And there's long history of this, but let me just remind everybody, whether you live in the US or not, the uh, reckoned in $2,010. Like how many people have used the expression, uh, if they can put a man on the moon, why can't they blank? Well, in $2,010, Apollo cost uh, 100, uh, rather 151 billion, 151 billion. The interstate highway system, which is quite large, and is used a lot more uh, than by 12 people, uh, cost 100, and by the federal portion, 114 billion. So it, there will never, I, I don't think there'll ever be another investment in space exploration at that level, because it was really a result of the Cold War. That's why people went to the moon. And, but on the other hand, everybody's pretty satisfied that if you can get a, a human into a situation to explore things, the human does things very well. Is sort of the best explorer you can get. For, and for now, I'm, I, I just well, in, a, in a matter of years, that won't be true. I don't think. So. Mar Mars Phoenix Curiosity. Hey, I'm a huge fan. Hey, I got the sundials. <laughs> I mean, I'm crazy for Mars. Yeah. But but, but, but the geology. I mean, I don't want to say the the other thing is. Bear in mind. I mean, I'm from the U.S. I grew up in the U.S. If it's U.S. versus anybody and whatever speedball. Uh -huh. I'm, you know, or uh, hockey, I'm generally U.S., but uh, Russia, the Soviet Union put the first cameras on the moon, the first soft landing on the moon, the first sample return, the first Mars rocks came back from the moon, all robotically. No. Mars rocks from the moon. Uh, Mars rocks from the moon. Bill, dude, <laughs> it's on my mind. You're, you're, you're not supposed mind. to tell anybody. The first, <laughs> the first rocks. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, it's, that's the kind of slip where you lose that CIA gig. That's right. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, it was all, it was all done by Hollywood anyway. So, so I apologize. The, uh, the first sample return from another world was done robotically by the former Soviet Union. But people didn't really get excited about it, and the Cold War didn't get resolved yeah. until humans were there. But, so but there's something to that. We're, we're about to move into a new age where we have SpaceX, which is led by Elon Musk, who did PayPal, and Tesla, mm -hmm. who's the most amazing young South African. He's about it my age true. and has, like, already had three major corporations. It's, he's the most inspirational person that I've ever encountered. And I have no clue what was said, but all right. Um, <laughs> As, as we move into the future, we're going to be moving into a future where instead of having NASA running the show, we're going to have the commercial agencies launching as well. We're going to have the Mojave Spaceport, Spaceport America in New Mexico. We're going to have Virgin Galactic joining Virgin Atlantic as a way to spend your tourism dollars if yeah. you're stupidly rich. <laughs> but, you know, but the problem is, I think that's all a scam. I, I really do. I think I just got asked about this. I, the point is that it's exponentially, look, to go in Earth or near Earth orbit, you know, to go the distance between New York and Washington above the Earth, yeah, maybe, maybe private industry can do it. But it's just exponent, the laws of physics say it's just exponentially more expensive and exponentially more difficult to actually explore somewhere interesting. And, uh, well, and, and therefore, I don't think it's ever going to be. I don't think private industry has ever got the... Well, the, the other commercial thing, wait, wait, payback wait, wait, wait. Is, is, is not going to be in the near term Dr. without the T. government. I've been politely silent, haven't I? I know. I was yeah, really... Okay. I, was, I was surprised. I was going to use the word oddly, but okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't think you were that polite, though, but it's okay. Uh, I just want to clarify some of this information that's being bandied back and forth. There is fundamentally no business case yeah. for private... Can, can I finish the sentence? <laughs> I'm not sure I want to be here anymore. <laughs> there is fundamentally no business case for private enterprise to advance a space frontier. Yeah. When you advance a frontier, you are making mistakes that the capital markets choose not to value. You are, have to create patents to enable things that you don't know will work. Anytime you are the first person to do something on that scale, the history of human civilization has demonstrated that the only funding available to do that is via governments. Yeah. And so what then happens is the patents get issued, the government figures out how to do it, they make it sort of routine, but they're inefficient because it's the government, then you cede it to private enterprise. Can you to give get us the, an example? Uh, sure. The Dutch East India Trading Company. They were not the agency that found America from Europe. That was Columbus, funded by Queen Isabella. There was Magellan, also funded by Spain. They laid the groundwork to find out where to go, does the Earth have an edge or not, is it something worth doing? Then behind them, the Dutch East India Trading Company came to conduct business in a way safer than could have possibly have been economically justified had they been the first to do it. You look at the railroads that crossed the United States. Um, Newt Gingrich mentioned that as entrepreneurs leading the way, but he neglected the fact that Lewis and Clark got there first on a major funded expedition under the Jefferson administration. So you lay out the land, you map the rivers, you map the terrain, then you've got an understanding of what the risks are for the capital markets to then value, then they come in behind. So I see any participation of the private enterprise in space exploration, not the first ones to go to Mars, not even to go back to the moon, but to make our access to low Earth orbit the efficiently costed exercise that it really should have been at the beginning of the shuttle but was never realized. And, yeah. and that is what they're doing. Yeah, but, so, but, uh, for but example, why do we want people in low Earth orbit? I mean, I just don't understand. Why, why do we want people hanging oh, out in low Earth what, orbit? Well, that, because they'll to buy seats to take a vacation there. Well, they already have. The people doing it, the people buying tickets at $20 million <laughs> yeah, a seat. A, it, so you make it $10 million, more people will buy the seat. Yeah, yeah. Twice million, is, even more. Yeah, absolutely, you're right. I think it's for entertainment So then purposes. what are you arguing with me about? Well, the point is, 
Yeah. As a goal, as a national goal, what do you want? Why do you want people in lower orbit other than no, no, entertainment? No, no, no. If it's commercial, it's a there's goal. no national goal. If it's commercial, it's whatever makes yeah. money. Yeah, I, no, no. I want them there goal. because it will lower the cost of getting satellites for research into orbit. Thank you. No, no. And, well, why would it do that? And <laughs> and and and. <laughs> Is there more? If NASA needs to go back to the space station, they don't have to launch one of their own rockets. Yeah. They hitch a ride on Elon Musk. But hopefully rocket. we can get rid of the space station so they won't have to go there. Whatever well, they will need, whatever is the need in low Earth orbit, NASA should not be the truck driver to yeah, make that happen. I agree with you completely. No, so... Uh, As I always do. So how do you... The, the analogy is Antarctica for me. Like, you maintain a scientific presence in Antarctica. You have people there. They think deep thoughts. They, uh, I remember very well cleaning bicycle chains with a uh, chlorinated fluorocarbon a carburetor cleaner. Can't buy that anymore because people discovered that it was hard on the ozone. Yeah. So uh, you may, So you, you killed the ozone. Yes, mm -hmm. I was the guy. <laughs> so if you, uh, you maintain a presence in Antarctica and you maintain a presence in Earth orbit if there's scientific things to do there. But the whole thing, everybody, is you want to explore space at a reasonable cost. This is something you do as an intellectual uh, intellectually sophisticated society with treasure, with money, with means. You explore Lewis and Clark, you explore the continent, you explore space, you explore deep space, because you don't really know what you're going to find. And I remind everybody that relativity was discovered barely a century ago, and yet everybody in this room got here on account of our understanding of relativity. I mean, you had your car navigation system, and many of you were on an airplane. And uh, those are driven now by information from space. If you told my grandfather there'd be signals from space that you have to take into account both the gravity of the Earth and the speed of the spacecraft, he'd think you were nuts. But yet here we all are. And so there is a whole nother physics, yes? Right there. Just, it's so close uh, that when we discover it, who knows? And this is what, uh, I grew up in the U.S., I mentioned that, but... What I've tried to do now, I wrote this op-ed, just remind people in the U.S. Congress and Senate that if you don't want to discover what makes the universe accelerate, maybe somebody in another country, maybe and, and somebody from China. But, 